Martian gopher and the apple pies. Now let's get our session today started. We're going to go on an adventure to Mars, but to start off with, I'd like to have Katie introduce uh, the Family Maker Camp and talk a little bit about why we're here today and uh, about what's happening. Hi everyone. Welcome to Family Maker Camp. I'm Katie with Make and I'm here with my son, Henry. And, and we're so excited to join Dr. Sparks on this adventure today. If you're new to Family Maker Camp, we are providing projects and content and live sessions with makers and resources and support for parents, all to help us take part in hands-on learning. So it's really exciting. Uh, please join us at makercamp.com. You can sign up for a newsletter uh, and we're sending out projects and book excerpts and you know, keeping you up to date with the calendar of all the maker sessions that we have planned. You can also follow us on our Maker Camp, Family Maker Camp Facebook page and group. And you can show us the projects that you made, use hashtag make together. We'd love to see what you're doing at home. And lastly, you know, Family Maker Camp is free for everyone. And it's in part uh, supported by the members of Make Community. So if you like what you're seeing and you wanna see more, please support this program by becoming a member at make.co. So thanks for joining and happy making. All right, gang, we're about to take off. You guys ready? Here's our introduction today for the uh, Martian Explorations. I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a jet pack and some fuel because we're going up high, high in the sky. Come on up for a ride. With your good friends at your side, imagination is your guide, because it's Dr. Sparks, science story typewriting time. Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are about to leave this planet and head to Mars for an adventure together. Are you guys uh, excited to be part of uh, the Martian Explorations today? Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Would you guys do me a favor? Would you all introduce yourselves? Would you say your first name and maybe the state where you are right now? Uh, and also your favorite planet in the solar system. River, do you wanna start us off? <laughs> so this is River. Uh, River, what's your favorite planet? Venus. What was that? I couldn't hear you. I have to speak up. I like Venus. Venus, an excellent answer. I've heard that on Venus, clouds of sulfuric acid rain down from the sky. We've only ever sent a handful of spaceships to Venus, and every single one of them, pretty soon after it landed, I'm pretty sure it exploded. Oh. <laughs> it's not a hospitable place, but it is a beautiful planet, so that's a great choice. Um, Henry, do you want to introduce yourself next? Say your first name, the state that you're in, and your favorite planet? Yeah. So Henry, what's your what's your favorite planet? Earth. Earth. <laughs> it's a great answer. The Earth is where we live. It's full of life and water. It's full of penguins. <laughs> and uh, mice live here and narwhals. Pretty much all of my favorite things in the world exist on Earth. So I think I'm in agreement with you, Henry. Uh, the Earth is a great planet. And Ryan, what about you? Um, my favorite planet um, is Neptune. Neptune? Why is your favorite planet Neptune? Um, I like the color blue and I really like stormy days. And it's always like stormy on Neptune. That is an awesome answer. All right, guys, so today what we are going to do is go on an adventure together. We're going to be playing a role-playing game. So you are each going to be a character, and then your characters will together solve a mystery. They'll um, go on an adventure. They may help some animals that are also living on Mars. So to start out with, I'd like you all to pick your characters. So um, Ryan, since you came on last, how about you go ahead and pick first? There are three characters that you can pick today. You can be either Martian Mouse, 
Martian Mouse is always coming up with a story or uh, excuse me, a song. Martian Mouse loves singing about absolutely anything. So if you say, Martian Mouse, isn't it a fine day today? Martian Mouse would probably say something like, a fine day, it's the finest day that has ever been. It's the finest day and I'm happy in this day is great and it's sunny, yeah. So that's how Martian Mouse would say hello, I think. The next animal is Martian Mole. Martian Mole is very clever, but is really, really food motivated. Martian Mole loves food more than anything in the world. And so if uh, you can imagine that uh, he baked cookies or she baked cookies that were too big to get out of the cookie jar, Martian Mole would come up with this crazy device that would like, you know, go in and it would be maybe, maybe a mechanical spider would crawl into the mouth of the jar and hoist up the cookies and scramble it out and then, then like pull it up on a tether or something like that. And then our final animal uh, that you can choose to be is Martian Squirrel. Martian Squirrel is big and strong, but is also very, very kind and doesn't like other animals to fight. Martian Squirrel is kind of the peacemaker. Does any of those ring a bell for you, Ryan? Um, Martian Mole. Awesome, okay. Um, all right, so Martian Mole, I just told you, she is pretty food motivated and is pretty clever. And she's also a mole, so she lives much of her life underground. What do you think a mole would sound like? What's Martian Mole's voice? Um, I don't know. <laughs> It can be your regular voice. You don't have to come up with a voice for Martian Mole, but it can be kind of fun to come up with something that's like kind of a silly take on our voice. What I about, think that Martian, what's that? What about, what if it was like squeaky? Yeah. Like, like how? Say something as Martian Mole. <laughs> can you say my favorite color is apple pie in mole speak? <laughs> <laughs> that is an incredible voice for Martian Mole. The only problem is, Ryan, I can't actually understand you whenever you say it. <laughs> so I love the idea of a squeaky voice, but can you make it just a little bit less squeaky? Can we turn that knob from like 11 down to like, like an eight? I don't know this. I'm I think that's great. <laughs> that is Marshmallow's voice if I've ever heard it. All right, so it's your choice, Ryan. You are welcome to continue to use Marshmallow's voice or you can just talk like yourself normally. That's your choice. All right, Henry, your choice next. Would you like to be Martian Mouse who sings songs about everything? Or would you like to be uh, Martian Squirrel who's big and strong but very, very kind? Marshall Squirrel. Okay, that sounds awesome. And Martian Squirrel, big and strong, has a big bushy tail. What do you think Martian Squirrel sounds like? Maybe a deeper voice? Hi. Oh yeah! Will you say, uh, will you say the moon is made out of sandwiches? The moon is made out of sandwiches. <laughs> That's awesome! That's a squirrel voice if I've ever heard one. All right, Ripper, you're up next. You wanna be Martian Mouse? Do you think you can give us a song about anything at all? Some crazy song? How about a song about balloons? <laughs> or, River, here's an alternative. Do you want to beatbox for me? Will you go, <laughs> and I will uh, sing for you? <laughs> well, that's all right. But what do you think Martian Mouse's ma uh, voice would sound like? Do you want to give us a mouse voice? Or would you just rather talk in your regular voice? That's fine too. Okay. All right, guys. So let's start with our first little scenario here. Okay. We're going to go to the planet Mars, that red celestial orb. <laughs> and here are our characters. Can you see them gathered around a campfire now? 
There's Martian Mouse wearing the sunglasses and looking all cool. Regular glasses, not sunglasses. It's Mars. <laughs> and then we've got Martian Squirrel with a big bushy tail. And we've got Martian Mole over there. And do you see Martian Mole is holding a hot dog on a stick? So what happens is Martian Mole, remember Martian Mole loves food more than anything else. Martian Mole is making a hot dog over the fire. And Martian Mole gets up to go and put, get the bun ready for the hot dog. And he hands his, the, her stick to Martian Mouse. But Martian Mouse is a little careless and drops the stick with the hot dog into the fire. So now I would all like you to pretend to be your characters now and to role play what happens. So Martian Mole, you're gonna be upset that Martian Mouse dropped your uh, hot dog into the fire. And Martian Squirrel, it's your job to try to make them not mad at each other. You guys wanna give that a shot? Sure. All right, go for it. Why? What? <laughs> why did you drop my um? Why did you drop my hot dog into the fire? <laughs> Can you speak up a little louder, River? Martian Mouse. Oh, she said, I didn't mean to drop it into the fire. What do you think, Martian Squirrel? Can you give some perspective here? Can you uh, maybe come up with a solution for what they can do to stop fighting? Mm -hmm. Stop being mean to each other. I don't know, Martian Mole, is that enough? Are you convinced? Kind of. <laughs> well, it sounds like Martian Mouse was very sorry to have dropped the stick into the fire. And Martian Squirrel is saying that you should forgive him. I don't know. Do you think that that's enough? Maybe, uh, I don't know, Martian Mouse, is there anything you could do to maybe make it up to Martian Mole? Make a s'more and a hot dog? Well, I think a s'more and a hot dog is much better than just a lost burnt hot dog that wasn't very good to begin with. Marshmallow, is that enough, do you think? Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, well, wonderful. Okay, so Martian uh, Mouse quickly makes a s'more and a hot dog to make it up to Martian Mole that, he had dropped the, that she had dropped the uh, hot dog into the fire. And all is forgiven. Together, the three heroes decide that they are going to uh, forgive everything and enjoy the rest of their evening together. They were just settling in to have an evening of hot dogs and marshmallows when all of a sudden they heard a cry of a bird. And this is how our adventure starts. All of a sudden, swooping down from the sky, it's Papa Sparrow. Help, help, he says. It's my daughter. It's Baby Sparrow. Baby Sparrow has disappeared. You heroes, you must help me. Can you help me find my daughter? Can you guys play your characters? Talk to the bird? I'm sure. Oh boy, thank you so much. I'm so happy. Can you uh can you look for my daughter? I really need you to find baby sparrow. She she was supposed to return uh two hours ago and she hasn't come back, and I'm out of my mind with worry. We'll help you. Don't worry, we'll find her. Yeah. Excellent, great job, guys. What would you ask the sparrow? What do you need to know from the sparrow? What does she look like? Well, um, Baby Sparrow looks a lot like me, except Baby Sparrow doesn't quite have my taste in hats. So she wasn't wearing a hat like this one, this very tasteful bowler cap um, I'm wearing. And also she's a little smaller than me, but otherwise you can definitely see the family resemblance. She's a sparrow too. What else do you guys need to know? Oh, that's a great question. You know, um, the last time I saw Baby Sparrow, she was up at her birdhouse. She has her own birdhouse. Um, and it's it's out in the middle of the plane. And uh, yeah, that's where I saw her last. What do you guys think? Is that enough information? Do you have any other questions for the bird? Was she in a good mood or a bad mood? What's that? 
Was oh, she- Baby Sparrow. Baby Sparrow was she was in a she was in a very good mood. I think um, she kept saying that she had a she was really gonna find the best worms ever. That she just knew where the best worms were hidden. Because we're crazy about worms. I love worms. Baby Sparrow loves worms. It's just a family value we share. All right, guys, I'm off to it. I got to get back to my nest real quick or else, uh, you know, she might return to our nest while you guys, while I'm here talking to you and then she wouldn't, she wouldn't know where I was. That would be terrible. So I'm out of here, guys. Good luck. I hope you find her quick. Great job, guys. You did it. You managed to ask the bird uh, all the questions that I think you need to know. So what are you going to do next? What's your next step? There's somewhere where there's a um, yeah, we should find where um, all the best worms are. Okay, that sounds like a pretty good idea. Um, okay, so uh, how? Are, what are you gonna do next? So where are you gonna walk to next? Um, maybe we should go to like a garden or some. Like we should find a garden that's very healthy because worms help gardens stay healthy. So there might be some good worms there. I think that sounds like an excellent idea. Um. The other thing though is too, what, what, what do you think? Uh, Martian, Martian mouse and Martian squirrel, or do you guys agree with that? Was there anything else the bird said that might lead you to a different place? Um, well, maybe um, the hat store. I mean like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me tell you a little bit about where you are, okay? Do you guys want to look at a map of, of the area? Sure. Would that be helpful? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, just so happens that you have a map. Let me pull it off the shelf right here. It's in this jar. And we can uh, untangle it here and pull it out. It's rather battered. It's had to survive the transit from Mars to here to be with you today. Uh, Okay. So here is our map. You guys are right now here at the campsite. You can see there's a little gravestone for the hot dog. Um, and a little campsite and a campfire. Um, here's the birdhouse that babe, Papa Sparrow was saying was where the sparrow was last seen. There's a well up here called Teardrop Well. Over here on the right, there's something called Blackthorn Cave. And then down here is the village of Red Pebble. And you happen to know that in the village of Red Pebble, there are a couple of, of uh, farms that might have some good soil. Mm-hmm. So what would you guys like to do? Where would you like to go on your map? I think we should go to the birdhouse and look for clues at uh, the birdhouse. House. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Then we go to the val- the valley of of red pebble or somewhere else where other the clues leave us lead us. That sounds like an excellent idea. You guys are certainly using your reasoning. Okay. So together, you gather up, you pack up your camp, you uh, unpack your campsite, uh, you put your tent away and you walk along the road until you come to where Baby Sparrow's birdhouse is. And there it is. Can you see? So let me paint the scene for you. Baby Sparrow has just finished building her birdhouse and there's still some supplies from how she had built it. There's some uh, planks of wood down at the bottom. Looks like there's a little coil of rope there as well. Baby Sparrow's house is at the top of a 30 foot tall aluminum pole that's very slippery. If you're going to get up to the birdhouse, you're going to have to come up with a solution to how to get to the top of the pole. So what do you guys think? What's a good way that you might climb a pole like that? So we should use the rope, that, um, throw it up to the top um, like a lasso so it goes around. And just in case, we should make a ladder. Okay, well, so which of you, those are you going to try first? It's gonna take some time to do both of those. You're gonna try I the lasso? I think we should like, tie the, like, like kind of like lasso the rope around and then like tie planks of board to it. Okay, like, so. Tie planks of board in the middle. Yeah, kind of like a, a rope ladder. That's pretty cool. Okay, so you're gonna make a lasso with a rope ladder on it, okay? Okay, so let me think about this. Um, the way I'm seeing it, I don't know that this is going to work because to my mind, if you put enough slats in the rope, that the um, that you can actually climb up it afterwards. When you try to throw it, I think it's going to be too heavy to really be thrown. I don't know. What do you guys oh. think? Wait. What if we use the rope and we tied knots in, like the like tied knots in it, 
so we could like hold on to the knot so we didn't slip and go up the rope. That is an excellent idea. Okay, so tie knots in the rope so that you can kind of use those as a way to pull yourself up the rope. That's really good. Um, but I love that you're really building off of uh, River's idea here, off of Martian Mouse's idea, that you can have these slats. Instead of the slats, that's too heavy, you're gonna use the knots instead. That's really good. Um, so what, what, do you, what's that, what's, what was that, Henry? Get the boards and then stack them up and, and then, Throw the rope up and then you climb up there. I think that is an awesome idea. I think that's uh, an idea that's really going to work well. So what I'm thinking here is it's going to be a really hard throw to throw that rope all the way up with a lasso on the end to get it over something on Martian uh, Sparrow's house, right? So if we take Henry's idea, if we combine all three of our solutions here. So uh, Ryan, oh, excuse me, Martian Squirrel had the idea for the rope. Martian mouse had the idea to put the knots in it and Martian uh, 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 mole, <laughs> wait, you're Martian mole, sorry. Martian yeah. mole had the idea for the rope with the knots in it. Martian squirrel had the idea to build a small tower um, and then Martian mouse had the idea to put knots in it instead. So no, but, but like, doesn't Mars have no gravity? Well, Mars actually does have gravity. The moon has very little gravity. Mars has about 40% of the gravity of Earth. So it is much easier to throw stuff up there. But I think if you had a little bit of a tower, if you built a little tower, it would make it even easier. I think Henry's on something here. Okay, so you stand on the pile of wood on the little tower that you built, and then you throw the rope up to the house. And let's see what's gonna happen. <laughs> okay, so the rope is thrown and it goes <sighs> And it loops over the top of the house and the first time it lands perfectly. And look, the rope is now attached to the house. Um, it looks like you guys managed to do it. Great job. Okay, so who's gonna climb up this rope first, do you think? I will. <laughs> well, I okay. Think, I think maybe like the squirrel should go first. What do you guys think? Does that sound fair? Squirrel can because squirrels yeah. can climb. All right, let's give that a shot. Okay, so the squirrel's gonna go ahead and uh, Martian squirrel, do you wanna pretend for us that you're climbing? Make some, can you make it sound like you're climbing a rope here? Ugh, ugh. <laughs> Great job. Oh, there, it looks like Martian squirrel's made it. Oh, she's got one, her tail wrapped around the top there and she's using one hand. Is she gonna climb up? I don't know. Guys, she's hanging on, one of her hands slips. Oh no! You guys, you gotta cheer her on. Say go Martian Squirrel, go Martian Squirrel. Go Martian Squirrel, go Martian Squirrel. Go, With your encouragement go. and enthusiasm, girl. she gets her hand back up onto the top and she pulls herself up and over and here she is. Oh, she gets her belly over the lip of the birdhouse and she's climbing up and she made it. She successfully climbed to the top of the birdhouse. Great job. All right, who's next? Who's gonna climb next? I'll climb next. All right. Go for it, Martian Mole. How do you, how's this gonna work? Describe it for me. Um, moles have very long nails, so like maybe I can climb up it. Uh, climb okay. It. All right, so show me your hands. How are you climbing? <laughs> okay, there you go. Yes, using her claws, uh, Martian Mole is able to climb up. Once again, the top is really, really tricky here. And it's, uh, she slips and her hand falls, but she uses her mole claws. She sticks them into the side of the house. <laughs> and now the other animals, Martian Squirrel, you gotta help her out. Martian Squirrel, give her a hand. Martian Squirrel, give her a hand. You're pulling her up with teamwork. Oh, look at that. Oh, Martian Squirrel is pulling. Pulling Martian Mole up and together they fall into a pile on the ground. They've made it, they made it to the top of the birdhouse. Now there's only Martian Mouse left. You guys can even be, maybe be nice and hoist Martian Mouse up. I don't know, what do you guys think? Come on Martian Mouse, just grab the rope and we will pull you up. All right, let's cheer him on. Martian Mouse, cheer her on, you ready? Yeah. M. M. Give me an O. Oh, give me a U, U, give me an S. I don't know how to do S with my body. Give me an E, E, 
What's that spell? Mouse! And the mouse has made it to the top. And all three of you have made it to the top of Baby Sparrow's Birdhouse. Congratulations, excellent job. You guys played your characters to a T and you've made it to the top of the birdhouse. All right, so you open the door to Martian, uh, to Baby Sparrow's Birdhouse. And it is super cool, first off, let me say. Martian Sparrow has some real style, but it's also kind of messy. You can see on the ground, there are uh, piles of clothes. There's a desk, there's a window, and out of the window is pointed a cannon. <laughs> there's a switch on the wall, and the switch has two positions, but instead of saying on and off, the switches say disco and no disco. Mm -hmm. And you can see really far out the window. If you look out the window, you can see all the way to the end of the Acadia Plain, which is where this is all taking place. You can see two of the moons of Mars up in the sky, Phobos and Deimos. There's only two moons, so you can see the two moons of Mars, Phobos and Deimos, and it's wonderful. So what would you like to look at in this house first? Do you want to look through the clothes maybe, or would you like to look um, in the desk? I think we should, or... I think we should look at the desk. Desk, yeah, the desk. Okay, well, let me show you what it looks like really quickly here. Um, okay, so he, let me paint you the scene. Um, this is what it should look, are we ready? Okay, this is what the inside of the house looks like right here. So you can see the cannon pointed out the window. There's a lamp. There's some clothes on the floor, which you can't see, but there's also a light switch there, disco, no disco. Where would you like to look first? Uh, in the desk. Okay, cool. Let's look at the desk. Okay, well, I have a little uh, representative of what this desk looks like here first. Um, okay, you guys ready? Here, you got your hand and you're gonna pull out the desk drawer and it looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. <laughs> what can you see? There's a, there's a, what is this? What is this stuff? Is there anything you wanna look at? We should look at the note. Oh, there's a note here, oh my heavens, look at this. Oh, what does it say? No, no, don't tell anyone about the safe behind the pig painting. Oh, there's a, oh, wow, okay. So let's uh, close this drawer then. Um, and- What's that? What if about what if we had the compass? Maybe. Oh, that is an excellent point. All right. I'll make sure. Um, well, okay, there's only one thing here though. If you take the compass, it is baby sparrow's compass. Uh you know, are you steal from okay, the sparrow? Never mind, put it back. So you could look at it and put it back. You could also maybe justify it that you're helping save baby sparrow's life here, and you could just borrow the compass and return it to her after you rescue her. Yeah, I feel like we should do that because we might need the compass. You might need the compass to rescue the baby sparrow. Now you. Yeah, because what if we get lost? Yeah, and if you got lost looking for baby sparrow, now there might be even more animals that are lost. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Martian, uh, Martian mouse and uh, Martian squirrel? You guys down with taking the compass? Okay. We'll return it. Yeah, you will return it. It's a little bit of a moral gray area though, so. <laughs> I understand that you're uh, a little hesitant. Okay, so uh, which one of you would like to hold on to the compass? Me. All right, uh, Martian, uh, Martian squirrel, you're gonna hold on to the compass, okay? You have a compass in your pocket now. All right, uh, what would you like to look at next? The face behind the pig picture. Oh, wonderful, okay. Well, so you're gonna look closely at this pig painting and, uh, um, Oh, look, it's a beautiful drawing of a pig, isn't it? I would hang that up in my house in a heartbeat. So you guys wanna look behind it? Yes. Whoa, here it is. There is definitely a safe here. Um, what's that? There's questions. Yeah. What are the answers to the questions, do you think? Okay, so 10 minus five is um, five. Okay, 10 minus five is five. I'll set that one to five. Okay, um, that, let's give somebody else a chance. Um, what do you think? Martian, Martian squirrel, what do you think? Do you know uh, maybe what's 57, 59 minus 57? Two. Ah, two, excellent, okay. Let's put two into the second digit. And Martian Mouse, what do you think? Do you know what six times seven is? Mm. 
This one's much harder than the other two. So if you need to, if anybody else knows the answer, that's fine too. I do. What's the answer? 42. 42? Oh, interesting. That's an important number in the history of space travel. <laughs> all right, 42. It looks like all the numbers are correct. And now I'm going to turn this dial down here. And it unlocks. And you know what's in the safe? We open the safe and there is, oh geez. This journal belongs to Baby Sparrow. What do you guys want to do? We should look inside of it to see if um, it tells us where she's going. Perfect. All right, you open the journal and inside, let me tell you what it says. The very first page says, my name is Baby Sparrow and I love Worms, gosh, I love worms. I love worms so much. I love worms whenever it rains. I love worms whenever the sun is shining. I love one worm. I love two worms. I love six worms. I love eating worms. I love eating worms in a sandwich. I love eating worms in ice cream. It goes on like this. Baby Sparrow talking about how much she loves worms for 642 pages. Page after page of worm facts, of just poems about how awesome worms are. But at long, long last, the very last entry says, I have found, I think, the perfect place to get worms. I've heard that Blackthorn Cave is full of worms. So I'm gonna go there and see if I can discover the secret uh, 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 cache of worms, all the worms in the world. We should, wait, what if we, to get, to do, to go there, we should go there to get there shorter Maybe we should like put ourselves in the cannon and shoot ourselves to the. <laughs> okay, uh, I will allow it. But before you do that, um, there's one other thing in this house that I'd like you to take a look at first. You know that switch on the wall? I think you should flick it just yeah. to see. What, what does yeah. it say? Can you read what it says? Disco and no disco. Yes, yeah, so right now it's set to no disco. Uh, maybe you want to flick it and see what happens? Yes, disco. Yep. It's going final. It's going Disco party. <laughs> 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 Great job. All right. I'm glad you found the switch. Okay. Um, so you guys look at the cannon. It will be possible. The cannon's just big enough for all the three of you to fit inside of it. Okay. Um, but notice that the cannon is missing a battery. It needs a nine volt battery to work. Oh, oh wait, in the drawer, there's a battery. Okay. Let's look in the drawer again, huh? Oh, there it is, huh? Is that a battery? Yeah. Okay, so you take the nine volt battery and you uh, are going to put it into the cannon. And then describe for me, how are you gonna aim this cannon for me, do you think? Um, using the compass. Using the compass, oh my goodness, you guys are such great problem solvers, that's awesome. Okay, so um, you're gonna stare out the window, okay? You've got the compass and where is it that you are going? Can you, can you find it on the map? We're going um, east. East, yes. To 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 what, to what uh, part of the map? Um, Blackthorn Cave. Exactly. Okay. So you have your compass here. Um, and who's gonna do the aiming here? I will. Okay, Henry. Do you want to? So Henry's gonna climb into the cannon last. Okay. Um, which makes sense. Martian squirrel's big and strong and can move that cannon pretty easily, right? Okay. So you're gonna aim the cannon. Uh, who climbs in first? All right. Martian Mouse. Excellent. What's that? Martian Mouse should. Okay, uh, that makes sense to me. Martian Mouse climbs into the cannon first. Gets nice and comfortable back there in the back of the cannon. Okay, um, and then Martian Mole, you're in next, right? Yes. And then Martian Squirrel, you're gonna aim one more time. Make sure that you've got it perfectly positioned. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, uh, so the way the cannon works, there's a little instruction manual right next to the thing. And it tells you um, that if you, uh, press the button, it will take three seconds for the cannon to fire. So 
Martians, squirrel, you're gonna have to press the button and then climb into the cannon very quickly without bumping the cannon. It's gonna be pretty tricky, but I think you can do it. You wanna give it a try? Mm -hmm. All right, describe for me what's gonna happen. You ready? Hit the button and then count to three. One, two, three. <laughs> There's an explosion and one after another, you fly out of the cannon. First to emerge is Martian Squirrel. He soars through the air, his bushy tail acting as kind of a kite to steer him just a little bit. And Martian Mouse, you're tumbling in the slipstream behind Martian Squirrel afterwards. Ah! Are you guys yelling or are you having a good time? What, what is the expression on your faces? To paint a picture for me. Ah! <laughs> Nobody looks particularly happy to be flying through the air. <laughs> What if Martian Squirrel was a flying squirrel like that glides? I'm down. I Okay, uh, Martian Squirrel, what do you think? Are you a flying squirrel? Like they glide through the air. They can you know, glide. we didn't say, I didn't say that Martian Squirrel wasn't a flying squirrel. So I'll allow it. Martian Squirrel, you're a flying squirrel. What are you going to do? You got to stop them. I mean, did you have a plan? What was going to happen when you hit the ground? Oh, Martian gosh. Squirrel, you got to save them. How, how was it, what's going to happen? Tell me, how do you save them? Henry, that's you. Uh, are you gonna? Use my tail to block it. Okay, so you're gonna like um, use it like a spring and like compress, like uh, like slow you down. Like if this is, you know, you're gonna like woo, sit down slowly on your tail. Yeah. Okay, so are you holding your friends? Do you have Martian Mole in one hand and Martian Mouse in the other hand? Okay, <laughs> sounds good. So uh, while you're flying through the air, ah! Martian Squirrel grabs a hold with one arm, Martian Mouse. And with the other arm, he grabs Martian Mole and he hugs you both to his chest. And then he rotates his body using his tail like a cat. And he points his tail right at the ground. And then with a smack, you guys land on the ground and Martian Squirrel's tail compresses like a spring, like a very, very bushy spring. And you come to a rest perfectly. And Martian Squirrel sets down Martian Mouse and Martian Mole, and there you guys are at the entrance to Blackthorn Cave. That was awesome. That was seriously the best way anybody has ever traveled to the cave. That was incredible, guys. <laughs> you should be very proud of yourselves. So here's the cave. And look, it looks like the entrance to Blackthorn Cave is being blocked by a rock. I am Martian Rock, and I am blocking the entrance to the cave, as you can see. I got an idea. What's that? What if, since I'm a mole, I'll dig under the rock. Oh, that is a great idea. That would normally work, but the rock is sitting on more rock. It's solid rock all around. But Ryan, that was an incredible problem solving right there. I really like how you're thinking. Um, any other ideas? Walk to the rock that, they need to, that we need you to find baby sparrow. Ah, you three are on a rescue mission. That must mean that you are good people. Don't you know that baby Sparrow flew inside of this cave? And I don't want you to follow after her because you could get lost as well. I think it's very dangerous to go into this cave and that is why I am blocking the entrance. How about you throw the rocks at him? Uh, okay, go ahead and try to throw rocks at me, but I'll warn you, I was born a rock, and my friends are rocks, and throwing rocks at me will probably do very little to me. Henry throws a rock! Dink! 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 Um, the rocks do in fact hit the, the Martian rock, and he goes, ah, uh, yes, that kind of tickles a little bit. Thank you for uh, scratching the itch I had on my cheek. I haven't had it scratched in four billion years. It's, I've been a rock for a very long time. I can push him away on the side. Okay, yes, Martian Squirrel goes ahead and gives that rock a shove. Oh, once again, you are tickling me, says Martian Rock. <laughs> Martian Rock is very, very heavy and he doesn't want to move. But I think you were onto something. When you talk to him and try to convince him, I think if you could convince this rock that uh, he should let you in, that you might as might get in. Hmm. Maybe you could ask him what it would take to convince him. Wait, is there anything evil in the cave? 
Uh, the only thing evil in the cave is the fickle uh, uh, nature of Mother Nature, um, which I don't know if Mother Nature applies on Mars, but there is a cave in inside the cave. That is all that is dangerous, but it is dangerous, not evil. Um, and why don't, why, well, she could get hurt when she's going through the cave. So why don't you let us go? And maybe like we, if you have like, if there's any rope or string nearby, you could um, sit on it so you wouldn't get lost in the cave. Oh, that is a very clever idea. You know what? I tell you what, you are so smart. That is how a How about you let me through and I can block the rocks because I'm strong. I think I can be convinced. How about this? I think you guys are pretty clever adventurers. If you can convince me that you're smart enough to be safe in that cave, then I will let you through. But to convince me, you're going to have to answer my riddles. Will you answer okay. some riddles for me today? Got it. You guys wanna answer some riddles? Sure. Okay, I have four riddles for you and they start out easy, but boy, they get very hard. I wrote them myself, so I'm very proud of them. Are you ready? Here is the first riddle. I carry within me something quite tall but it's folded up tiny because I'm pretty small. With a spot that's just right, plus water and light, I'll be a bit of shade for you all. Do you wanna hear it with that Martian Rock's voice? It might be easier. How about you sneak through those little holes? Well, I think you're gonna to have to answer the riddle to get through. Do you guys wanna hear the riddle once more? Sure. Okay, um, I carry within me something quite small, but it's folded, I carry within me, excuse me. I carry within me something quite tall, but it's folded up tiny for I am quite small. With a spot that's just right, plus water and light, I'll be a bit of shade for you all. So it starts up small, but it becomes very tall. It provides shade and it needs water and light. Oh, um, it's a seed. It's a seed, yes, exactly. That is the right answer to my riddle. A seed, that is right. You guys are pretty smart, but maybe not smart enough. There are three more riddles yet to solve. Are you ready for my second riddle? Yes, because I played Batman and I've, I've did the, the Joker's riddles. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how my riddles compare. All right, you ready for riddle number two? Okay. Yes. Uh, I come from the back of a bird, but I'm certainly not a turd. Yellow is my heart with a lot of white parts. Call me scrambled if I have been stirred. Egg. Egg, yes. It looks like you both got that. Great job, River. Great job, Ryan. All right, that is the right answer. Egg is the right answer. Two more riddles yet before I roll aside and let you into this cave. Are you ready for the third riddle? Yeah. I'm in both, all right, I'm in both the grass and the tree, but I'm not alive. I'm what your eyes see. If you can't find me on money, I'll spell it out for you, honey. Grab rainbow's ears every nearly. Mid? Bark. What did you say, Ryan? Bark. Bark, twig, did you say twig, River? No, myth. Myth? Myth. Missed, missed. Uh, both great guesses, but not quite right. Let me read it for you one more time. I'm in both the grass and the tree, but I'm not alive. I'm what your eyes see. Oh, green. It's the color yes. green. It's the color green. Because you find it on money and I'll spell it out and it's grab rainbow's ears every nearly, G-R-E-E-N. Great job, great job, Ryan. You guys are doing great with these riddles. All right, green was the answer to my riddle, but there's one more left, the hardest riddle of all, and I'm very proud of it. All right, you guys ready for this riddle now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm as round as a quarter, glide straight as a dove. I'll carry stuff for you, you just have to shove. The only time I'm alone is when I'm a juggler's throne. While I'm rolling, they balance above. A ball. 
A ball is an excellent guess, but it's not the right answer. You are on the right track, though. A frisbee. A boat. A boat is also a good idea. It does carry things for you. you uh, just, so. A frisbee. A frisbee, also a good idea. Henry, do you have an idea, maybe? A drone. A, a wheel. A wheel, yeah, great job, Henry. That was amazing. Yeah, so let me give it to you one more time. I'm as round as a quarter, glide straight as a dove, carry stuff for you, you just have to shove. So carry stuff for you. The only time I'm alone is when I'm a juggler's throne. Cause you know, sometimes jugglers sit on unicycles. The only time I'm alone is with the unicycle. Cause usually, anyways. <laughs> You guys solved my last riddle, the riddle I'm most proud of. And with that, I must roll aside and let you into the cavern because you are just so clever. Please be careful inside of the cave. I know Baby Sparrow has already been trapped by a cave in. And with that, Martian Rock rolls to the side and you guys are able to climb into the cave. Okay, now let me set the next scene for you guys. Inside of the cave, it is very, very dark and it takes a second for your eyes to adjust. But once your eyes do adjust, you can see it's very cavey inside the cave. There are stalactites and stalagmites. In front of you is a deep, deep chasm. Do you guys know what that word means, chasm? It's like a pit. It's a big, deep hole in the ground. And there's a hole that separates you from, across of you is Baby Sparrow. You can hear a voice crawling, crying weakly from a pile of rocks. The voice is saying, help, help. Baby Sparrow is trapped under a pile of rocks on the other side of the pit, on the other side of the chasm. So to solve this last riddle, you are going to have to find a way across the chasm. How uh, might you cross a get the gap? I'm a mole, I can dig. Okay, so describe for me what's gonna happen. You're gonna dig under the pit? I'm gonna use um, Squirrel's tail. How are you going to use squirrel's tail? Uh, sit and then go on the side and then crawl. Okay, so crawl. Well, okay. It's not going to be possible for you to cross, to go around the pit, I guess. Um, you're going to need to build some sort of uh, solution to cross. cross. Um, so, uh, Ryan, digging is once again a very good solution. I love that you're thinking with your abilities because you're a mole. But the problem is that if you dig deep, at the bottom of the pit is actually water. You can hear the sound of running water. There's like a little creek down at the bottom. And so if you dig that deep, it's actually gonna fill with water. And so your hole is gonna fill up and you won't be able to get around. Wait, we should do that. So like, I know a trick. If you lay on water like this, um, you'll float across. Or like we could swim across if I dig under and let the hole fill up with water. Okay, so you could swim across the chasm, but the problem is there's still the other side of the chasm that you would have to climb up. So imagine it's like a deep, deep pit. And then at the bottom, there's the creek, but you're gonna have to climb down the steep side, cross the creek, and then climb up the steep side. So and there, we can see it now. Okay, so you can see there's a, a chasm, that's the pit in the middle. And then on the other side is the tumble down pile of rocks. <clears throat> so you're gonna need to find a way to get across this pit, this gap. Uh, if, if you can. Well, say that one more time, Henry. Bridge. If you if there's any wood, you can make a bridge. Or if there's a long piece of wood, you can make a bridge and then cross. Okay. Well, um, was there anybody you met that might know where there would be wood? Um. Or do you can just cut bricks in half? You could just cut bricks in half. Ryan, what do you think? Do you like the idea of making a bridge? But what if Squirrel used um, his tail and like made it spin like a helicopter and flew across? Ah, uh, that only works in the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons. I don't know that that works in reality. I'm struggling. So like, so he spins his tail around so fast that it acts like a helicopter? Yeah, but, and if that doesn't work, um, you said he was a flying squirrel so he can glide. Uh, it's gonna be tough though, cause he's got a, He'd have to glide and stay at the same height. Gliding squirrels can only kind of like fall slowly, you know? I don't think he could make it across. But I like the idea of building something. How about if you have any glue, you can cut the bricks and then glue them. 
Okay, so make a bridge out of stone, out of the stones in the cave, you thinking? Or maybe we could get, if there's like a very long stick that could reach to the bottom and we could like use it to like do, you know how those people, um, you have a giant stick and then like leap on the stick and jump with it? We could yeah. do that too. You like the pole vaulting kind of thing. Um, yeah. And if everybody's seen Star Wars, they did that in Star Wars too. They do it in Star Wars too. They do it in Animal Crossing, I think, as well. Um, okay, so you're gonna need a long pole to do that. Where might you find a long pole? Uh, in the cave. In the cave. Or in the water because sticks float in water. They do float in water. You want to go? The cave What's because that? The caves are usually in the forest. So, like, if we got cut down a tree and made a long stick. That would work, but on Mars, there aren't a lot of forests. And so there's not a lot of wood, but I bet if you would ask somebody if they knew where wood was, somebody might be able to help you. Wait, in the town. There was in the town. The, in the Pebblestone town thing, place. I wonder if there was anybody closer by though. How about you can, the boulder. You could ask the boulder, sure. You guys want to ask the boulder if he knows where there's wood? Yeah, sure. He's right at the entrance to the cave. Hello again. Have you rescued baby squirrel yet? He says. No, but to rescue baby squirrel, we're going to need to ask you where the um where the wood is. If there oh. you know, where the wood is. You are in luck. I do happen to know where there's a long pole. I saw somebody trying to build a treehouse once and they used a lot of wood to build it, but they left a long pole just around the corner of the cave. You couldn't see it when you came in because of course you flew in via cannon. But if you go around the corner, you will find yourself a long pole. Well, you go around the corner and you find a long pole, maybe big enough to go down to the chasm. And uh, so uh, describe for me what's gonna happen, Ryan. You've got an idea of how this works, the, the, the pole. So, it might break. For us, these, long, these people, they, um, they run, they go um, a really long distance, they run with the pole, they put the pole down on the ground, they hold on to the pole, and then it swings them across, and then at the last second, they jump. Whoa, look, it happened, it did it, oh wow. Martian Mole, you just pulled vaulted across. I'm convinced you did it. Amazing job. Okay, so you've now made it to the opposite side of the chasm. And I, I can tear the hole and put it on the pole yeah. because it's strong. I'm strong. Okay, yeah. So uh, Martian Mole, do you want to throw the pole back to Martian Squirrel? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so you throw the pole back to Martian Squirrel. It slams up against the side. Martian Squirrel, do uh, you want to describe for me what's going to happen? Uh, throw it on the top. You throw it on the, on the, how are you throwing it? On the hole. Okay, so you put it in the hole. And then do you jump or what happens? You jump, you're supposed to jump across. And then at the last second, you jump off because it will make you swing to the other side. Okay, like, you can try it. Yeah, Martian like, Squirrel, you going to jump? All right, here he goes, Martian Squirrel. Pole vaulting champion, here we go. Da, 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 da. He puts the pole down, he leaps. He makes it to the other side. Oh, he did it, great job. Martian Mouse, do you wanna come across as well or do you wanna hang on the other side and help them if they need help on the other side? I'll stay on the other side. Okay, cool, okay. Because if they get stuck, it would be easier for someone else to just go off than for everyone to be trapped. I think that makes a lot of sense. Instead of just two people, and then they can like three, I think you're being very clever about how you approach rescuing somebody. It's it's always good an idea, a good idea to have somebody that can go for help, you know, or that can help you out if you get stuck or something. Okay, so um, Martian mole and Martian squirrel, you guys approach the pile of rocks. You can hear baby sparrow crying out. Baby Sparrow says, help, help, help. Baby Sparrow is stuck under the rocks. And Baby Scar Sparrow is really scared. It's dark and her wing is hurt. She probably can't fly. 
What would you say to an animal that was scared in the dark like that? It will be okay. Henry, oh, and I know a trick to give you night vision too. Oh, how, how do you give a sparrow night vision? Um, you close one eye in the dark. You like put your, um, you put your hand over one um, eye and you hold it there for a while. And then like, um, you, I've tried it before and it worked for me, but. Okay, well, yeah, sure. So uh, you, you describe this to Baby Sparrow and two things happen. Baby Sparrow can now see a little better out of one eye, but also you were able to distract Baby Sparrow. Baby Sparrow feels a lot better because she had something to do besides feeling scared about the situation she was in. But Henry, do you think you can say something nice to Baby Sparrow and calm her down? She's scared and she's in the dark and she's kind of hurt. What do you oh, say to comfort her? Okay. What'd you say? Don't be scared, it's okay. Okay. I think Baby Sparrow... What did, what did you say about Janelle? We'll get you out. That's really comforting, I think. I think Baby Sparrow feels a lot better. Okay, well now let's get Baby Sparrow out of there. What do you think? Baby Sparrow's calm enough to move now. What are you guys, how are you guys gonna get this bear out of there? You gonna move the rocks first or what's gonna happen? Uh, use my tail to, then you can climb up and I'll throw them on the top. Okay, okay, sure. So you're gonna use your tail to move the rocks and then you're gonna um, carry Barry, Baby Sparrow with your tail? Okay. Okay, great. That's a great idea too, Henry, because whenever it comes to using the pole to get back across, you'll have your hands free. All right, so you guys gonna pull vault back across? Yeah. Yeah. All right, wonderful. Okay, here comes the pull. Uh, who wants to go first? I'll go about, first. Do you guys wanna go at the same time? Sure. All right, you guys go together. You ready? One, two, three. You take a running start and leap and use the pole and you make it across the chasm. Oh, you did it, great job. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now you guys come once again out into the sunlight. You're carrying Baby Sparrow. And um, th th it's very, very bright at first. You can't see because once again, your eyes have to adjust to the harsh Martian sun. And Baby Sparrow is uh, okay, you can tell. She's, her wing is hurt, she can't fly. It's pretty badly bruised. But she doesn't seem like she's bleeding, doesn't seem like her wing is broken. So it looks like she's gonna be okay if you can just get her out and get her some help. Um, so you guys are outside the cave now where Martian Rock was. And Martian Rock says, oh, hello. I, uh, while you were gone, I went and got some more help. I decided to go and get Papa Sparrow and he's coming right now. And so as you guys sit there in the Martian sun, uh, you can see from very far away, Papa Sparrow is coming flying down through the air. And Papa Sparrow says, oh my heavens, you guys did it. You rescued baby Sparrow, you rescued my daughter. I'm so grateful. You guys are absolutely incredible adventurers. You did the impossible. You were able to rescue my daughter and you used such great problem solving to do it. And you flew through the air like a sparrow. You guys are now honorary sparrows because you flew so good and because you rescued my daughter. What do you guys think about that? You guys wanna be honorary sparrows? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, and also, I think I can give you guys a treasure, a reward for having rescued my daughter. Would you guys like a treasure? Yes. I have to warn you, it's not something that everybody likes. A lot of people have very strong opinions about the thing that I'm going to give you. But many of those opinions are very positive. So you might like what I'm about to give you. You guys ready? Look, there's Papa Sparrow right there. The gift I have for you guys is the gift of disco. Here's a disco ball for you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys, we just solved the adventure. Do you think we can have a little dance party, party maybe? Do you guys yes. want to dance with me? Let's have a disco party, disco party. Do, 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 do. I'm going to do the snorkeler, snorkeler. What's your favorite dance move? Here's the crab, the crab. <laughs> oh, look, Ryan, you're doing such a great job dancing. That was incredible. Incredible dance moves. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, you were spectacular today. You did an excellent job. You managed to rescue Baby Sparrow. Along the way, you solved some riddles. You had some great problem solving, some crazy solutions to problems. I didn't even see the solutions that you guys came up with. 
pole vaulting across the chasm, that was inspired. Using the rope with the knots in it and standing on a tower, I love that you all three used, uh, you all contributed to that solution. Together, you came up with a way to get up to Baby Sparrow's birdhouse. You guys are amazing. And I just want to thank you so much for being a part of the Martian Explorations today. I'm Dr. Sparks, you guys are incredible. And um, I think that's all that we have today for the Martian Explorations. If you wanna stick around, I will finish that story that I promised you at the start. Um, but uh, if you guys are watching right now, if you wouldn't mind, okay. Uh, if you guys wouldn't mind giving our, uh, our, our, um, our participants today a round of applause. Can we give a round of applause for River, Henry, and Ryan? You guys were absolutely amazing, you guys. Incredible problem solvers. And even on Mars, where gravity is only 40% what it is on Earth, and the soil is full of poison, and there's not much atmosphere to speak of. Great job, guys.